What's going on friends? One of the biggest horsepower producers and also one of the quickest ways to get more power out of your motorcycle is to swap the cam. But if you're going to swap the cam out, there is a lot of things that you really need to take into consideration. And also there's been a lot of really good questions raised by you viewers to me about what happens if I swap this cam out. Is it going to decrease the life of my engine? Is it going to make noise? Those are all very valid questions and some really good genuine concerns. Also the other thing you got to consider is what kind of cam you're going with. Are you going with a bolt-in? Are you going with a high lift? Also you got to think about your compression ratio. We're going to take a look at some of those things today and see if we can't get some things cleared up when it comes to swapping a cam into your bike. So the first thing, it is no secret that most Harley-Davidson's twin cam Sportsters, not so much the Milwaukee 8s, but they do have a little bit of top-end tick. And where this top end tick comes from is basically your rocker arm shaft and the bolt that holds it down, that bolt is supposed to keep that from rotating. But it doesn't exactly do the job that it's supposed to do. It leaves a little gap in there which allows the shaft to rotate and you kind of get that little top end ticking noise. Does it hurt anything? Not really. But if you go and you put a high lift cam in there or even just a bolt in cam, what you gotta remember is that these are way more aggressive than what the stock cams are. So you're automatically gonna have a little bit more valve train noise. Now you can quiet down that normal tick from that shaft rotating with a set of rocker lockers. Now, is a high performance cam gonna decrease the life of your engine? Well, it is a high performance part. Guys, please don't forget, if you enjoyed today's video, please don't forget to hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. Now what we have to consider with the stock cams, these are very mild cams. These are made to meet emissions, put out just enough horsepower and torque, and really keep the engine reliable. So swapping to a high performance aftermarket cam, it's not gonna necessarily decrease the reliability of the engine in any way. Is it probably a little harder on the valve train? Well, yes, honestly, because they have a lot more lift and duration. They're gonna be bumping them valves and pushing them springs a little harder than the stock ones would. If the bike is taken care of and it's ridden kind of conservatively, I mean you're not beating on it all the time and you're still changing your oil, it's really not going to make any difference as far as terms of reliability. That bike will still go just as many miles as it would even with the stock set of cams in it. Now you guys know that I really love wood cams. I love the wood cams because there's so much power output from those cams. Those cams work wonderfully no matter what engine you're putting them in whether it be an Evo, a twin cam, and the kind of power they're getting out of wood cams with the WM822XE, that is just absolutely incredible power on that Milwaukee 8. Now for the power that you get out of a wood cam, there is a downside, and this question comes up often. Wood cams, yes, they are a little bit noisy, but that is the trade-off for making that power. Wood cams have a very aggressive ramp angle, and they also nose off pretty quickly, so you do get a pretty significant amount of valve train noise. Now, if that's gonna bother you, you might wanna steer away from wood cams and kinda of compromise a little bit and go with something that's got a smoother ramp angle and doesn't nose off so quick. The trade-off is you're not gonna get that big power output. You're still gonna get good power, don't get me wrong, but it's not gonna be insane, kinda of like I would say the wood cams will produce. Another consideration that you really wanna make in changing the cam out is what else are you gonna to do to the bike? For most people, just a straight bolt-in cam is gonna be more than enough power and you're gonna be happy with that for quite some time. Now, if you do plan on upping the compression ratio, you do plan on doing some head work or going any further with the bike, a bolt-in cam may not necessarily be the thing you wanna go with because a bolt-in cam, you have to remember, these are designed to work with the stock compression ratio, the stock valve train, in most cases. Now some cams do have a pretty good allowance where if you want to go up to 10 to 1, maybe even 10 and a half to 1, they will actually work with those higher compression ratios even being a bolt-in cam. So before you go out and buy a cam, you need to make those important considerations on are you going to do any more to the bike? Because the worst thing you have to do is have to end up buying parts twice. If you decide to get, put a big bore kit on and up, up your compression ratio, all of a sudden you might be out of the operating range of where that cam performs best and then you're going to at that time have to go ahead and buy a high lift cam and put valve springs in it. And I know what you're probably thinking. If you want to get in there put a high lift cam in and go ahead and change the valve springs and then I'll go do my big bore kit up the compression later on down the road, 
Well, that's kind of a catch-22 there. Because if you go and you put the high lift cam in it, and then you go ahead and put the proper valve springs in that to handle that cam, that cam may not necessarily work with the lower stock compression ratio. That's why I'm saying it is very important to know where you're going and plan ahead for what you're going to do in the future to try to keep yourself from having to buy parts twice. Now when it comes to selecting the proper cam for your motorcycle, there's a lot of factors there. One of them is the kind of bike you ride. If you have a touring bike, you probably wouldn't be happy with a high revving cam. A high revving cam, something that's going to rev out to the red line pretty hard, but kind of lacks on the bottom end, that's not going to be really suitable for a touring bike. But you can put any cam you want in any motorcycle to fit your riding style. But in most cases, with a say a touring bike, you want something that has a really good bottom end and revs out pretty smoothly through the rev range up to the red line. Now if you have a Dyna, which is obviously a much lighter motorcycle than the touring bike, you want a cam that's going to come on real hard in the mid-range and then rev out real high on the big end. Because with the Dyna, you're not really so much concerned about the low end torque as you would be with the touring bike. Now, soft tails, you got to kind of split the difference there. They are heavier in the Dyna, but they're not quite as heavy as the touring bike. So when it comes to a soft tail, I kind of more like to tend to lean towards a cam that's more suited for the touring bike. Something that produces a lot of low end torque, excellent mid-range, and revs out pretty good through the, up through the big end. Now in planning your cam swap, definitely the one thing I would not skip on, change the cam bearings out. That's just cheap insurance, you're already there, get it done. Now when it comes to the lifters, there's two schools of thought here. You know, we can inspect the lifters, if they look clean, they look good, that's up to you if you want to go back with them. Personally, I like to change them unless, say, the bike's got less than 10,000 miles on them and they look clean, they look good, the rollers feel good in them, but even then, in my mind, it's still a risk. If you're putting in a high-performance cam, even if it's a bolt-in cam that works with the stock valve train, I still like to go ahead and pop for a better set of lifters than what comes stock. Now, when it comes to doing it right, we all know the price just keeps going up and up. Can you go back in with the original cam plate and the original oil pump? Absolutely, but you're already down there, you're already in there, and I really stump for the fueling OE cam plate because that cam plate will allow you to use a factory oil pump or you can actually buy fueling's aftermarket OE pump which is actually a, a good high flow oil pump that'll also work with their OE cam plate. And the best thing I like about the OE cam plate is that these cam plates are designed to basically deal with the run out that the press cranks tend to have. So it's a lot less risk than going with the race plate and plus you do to your run out check worst thing to do is already order all those parts and get it all tore down and then find out you've got well over five thousandths of run out you can get away with a race plate at five thousandths of run out but it's a big risk i mean you really risk tearing up those parts and that new oil pump and that's not something you want to do after you just invested about eight hundred dollars in a new cam plate and oil pump so guys is an aftermarket cam going to reduce the liability of your bike not really, not if you ride it conservatively and you still take care of the bike. Are you gonna to have to deal with a little bit of valve train noise? Yes. Even if you go with an SNS or a fueling cam, those tend to be a lot quieter than the wood cams. They still produce excellent power, but so far from everything I've seen, there's really nothing out there that's gonna to top the wood cam when it comes to all out power. But obviously with the wood cam, you do have that trade off. We are gonna have a little more valve train noise. It doesn't hurt anything. Yeah, you probably get used to it after a while, but if it's going to bug the crap out of you, I would stay away from the wood cams. So guys, I really appreciate all the comments you guys have left on all the videos, and I was going back through reading comments, and these were just some of the most commonly asked questions that keep coming up about camshafts and cam swaps, and a lot of things I should consider, anything I should be concerned about. I hope we really got some of those questions cleared up today. And guys, if you enjoyed today's video, please don't forget to hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. But guys, that's all I've got for you this week. Hope you guys ride safe. Get out and enjoy this beautiful weather we've been having here in Oklahoma. The weather has just been fantastic here the past few days. But anyhow, guys, you ride smart, stay safe on the streets, dodge those cars, and I'll catch you guys back here next week with a brand new video. Thanks for watching.